Hello, Mr. Pearce, how can I help? Hello there. My partner has been missing since Monday and has not contacted anyone. When a female children's book author seems to have disappeared without a trace, a police investigation uncovers the truly disturbing reality of her whereabouts. This investigation would lead police down a dark path to discovering something that no one expected. My name's Helen Bailey and I'd like to introduce you to my new book, which is called When Bad Things Happen in Good Bikinis. Helen Bailey lived in London with her husband John and was a successful children's author. In 2011, John and Helen went on holiday to Barbados when John went swimming in the sea and unfortunately drowned, leaving Helen stranded on holiday. After her husband's death, Helen was struggling and created a blog called Planet Grief to help herself and others deal with the loss of a loved one. Through her blog, she met a man called Ian who had also unfortunately lost his spouse. The two quickly formed a relationship together and decided to get engaged. The newly engaged couple decided to get a house in the rural town of Royston, where Helen played a massive part in the community. She was always asking neighbours to come round for cakes or coffee. The two shared the new house with Ian's two sons and her beloved dog. Because of Helen's success as an author, she had built an extensive property portfolio. She was believed to have had assets worth over £3 million. Helen left her home for a few days in the middle of writing a book with her dog on the 11th of April. This did not concern Ian. But after not being able to contact Helen for four days, Ian became worried, and on the Friday, the 15th of April 2016, the police received a call from Ian saying his partner, Helen Bailey, has been missing since Monday. Hello there, my partner has been missing since Monday and has not contacted anyone. Said she was going away, hasn't gone any that way she said she was going, so um, we just decided we should report it. Oh yes, it hasn't been reported already? No, it hasn't, no. Okay, right. Um, and she's been missing since Monday? Yeah. Okay. And what's her date of birth? Oh, crikey. God, she signed so me there. 20 second. Right, just let me double check. One second. Oh, God. I'm sorry, I'm just double checking. You, as you asked that, it just went straight out of my head. Ah, no problem. 22nd of August, 1964. She's self-employed, so she works from home. So she... No, she left a note. She said... She said in the note something like, I need space and time alone. I'm going to Broadstairs. Please don't contact me in any way. But in Broadstairs, she's got, we've got a, a cottage down there, but we, people have been down there with neighbours, and she hasn't, she's not there. Hasn't been there either. Ian told police that Helen had been feeling really tired recently and was anxious that maybe something was wrong with her health. He also told police Helen had left him a note saying she needs some time alone, she's going to her holiday home in Broadstairs and not to contact her in any way. When police asked for the note, Ian could not produce it and tells the police he threw it away. The note was never found. It's been a week since Helen's disappearance and still no one has heard from her. The police found it suspicious that Helen hasn't been seen by anyone and hasn't left any financial trail. If Helen was planning on creating a new life for herself, there would have been signs that showed her preparations beforehand. For example, she may have withdrew money or she might have bought a new phone. Helen Bailey's phone had been turned off for the time she was missing, so people's phone calls were going straight through to voicemail. However, on the 16th of April, five days after she went missing, Helen's phone connected to the Wi-Fi in Ian and Helen's holiday home in Broadstairs. The police checked her digital footprint and found transactions on her bank card that day after the day of her disappearance. But it appears that this isn't Helen using her account. It's her fiance, Ian. The police also found that standing order from her personal account to Ian and Helen's joint account had been increased from £600 a month to £4,000 a month. After discovering this, the police urgently needed to speak to Ian, but when arriving at his house, he was nowhere to be seen. Ian had gone on holiday that was previously planned for him and Helen. Neighbours were surprised that he could go on holiday that soon after Helen's disappearance. On Monday the 11th of July, after two weeks on holiday, Ian returns home to the police in his house and is arrested on suspicion of murder. Morning, Ian. How are you? I'm Detective Sergeant David Sharp from Major Crime Team. Okay. Okay. I've got a warrant to search the address. Section 8, well, of course, Section 8 pays warrant. Excuse me, listen to what um, the sergeant's got to I've say. Got some more to say to you, Mr. Stewart, okay? I'm what? arresting you on the suspicion, on the suspicion of the murder of Helen Bailey. Are you joking? And of disposing her body in a manner to are likely to instruct the coroner and the theft of money of Helen Bailey. Okay, so you do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do mention in question something that you may to rely in court. Anything you do say may be given evidence. Do you understand that? Oh, yes, sir. On Monday, the 11th of April, 
the day Helen went missing, Ian rearranged his morning doctor's appointment to later on in that day due to car troubles. The doctor described Ian to have been very distant during his visit. On that same day, Ian is seen entering a rubbish tip and discarding a duvet. Ian then visited Helen's solicitor that is dealing with selling one of her properties. Ian was very aggressive with wanting to push through the sale of one of her properties in Gateshead, but the solicitor told him that it was not possible without Helen being there. Later on that night, Ian drives to town and spends the evening with one of his sons and even went for a Chinese meal. Two days after Helen's disappearance, Helen's brother contacted Ian after not being able to get into contact with Helen and Ian told him that Helen had gone to spend some time in Broadstairs. So her brother went looking for her as it was unusual that she hadn't replied to his messages in days, but she was nowhere to be seen. Ian also went to Broadstairs to their holiday home to look for Helen and that's when Helen's phone connected to the Wi-Fi but there was no doubt she didn't go there. Helen would have been seen by someone if she did. Ian could have possibly taken Helen's phone in order to confirm to the police that Helen did go to Broadstairs to lead them down the wrong path in their investigation. During Helen's disappearance, people witnessed Ian going about his day-to-day -day life without a care in the world and acted like nothing was wrong. Ian was also Helen's next of kin in the will, meaning Ian would be financially looked after if anything ever happened to Helen. The police knew Ian could not get charged with murder without a body. Police interviewed Ian, but Ian only answered no comment to most of the questions. With no more leads, the police looked back at the body cam footage from Ian's arrest and during it, Ian mentioned the garage door multiple times, asking why are the garage doors open. The garage doors open? Why are the garage doors open? The last thing Ian does while being arrested is tell his son that the garage doors are open. The police search Ian's property and in the garage notice a jeep parked over a manhole cover. They move the jeep and open up the manhole cover, which was a pit for disposal liquid waste and sewage from the house. This is where they found Helen Bailey's body and her beloved dog. Helen's body was taken for a post-mortem examination to find out her cause of death. Helen's cause of death was suffocation. However, the examination results were inconclusive and it's unknown if Helen was put in the pit alive and suffocated or was murdered then put in the pit. Her results also revealed a high dose of sleeping pills. These were the same sleeping pills Ian was prescribed. Ian had been drugging Helen for two months in the lead up to her murder. On February the 22nd, 2017, Ian Stewart was found guilty of murder, fraud, preventing legal burial and three counts of perverting the course of justice. Ian Stewart was sentenced to life with a minimum 34 year term. After Ian being sentenced, the police began investigating the death of his wife in the garden of their home on the 25th of June 2010, six years before the murder of Helen. Ian Stewart, while serving his time in prison for the murder of Helen, was also found guilty of the murder of his previous wife, Diane, in 2010, where the original cause of her death was given as a sudden unexplained death through epilepsy. However, tissue and brain samples were recovered by police and was examined by forensic experts. Their conclusions was that Diane's death was most likely caused by a prolonged restriction to her breathing from an outside source. He was sentenced to a whole life order, meaning he would never be released from prison. It's believed that both of the murders were for financial gain as he received over £96,000 after the death of his wife.